Hello everybody, my name is Liam and welcome to our presentation on telephone counselling. Here we hope to offer some insight into the nuances of telephone counselling and how it may differ from our usual face-to-face -face contact. Unfortunately, with our current climate, it has become near impossible to see clients face-to-face -face, and this means that we are having to reach out to new mediums in order to continue supporting those who are in need. So to start out, the main thing to remember is that therapy starts with you. So one thing is to think about your counselling space. How much does it differ to your own counselling room? Is where you're practising confidential for both you and your client? And also, do you feel comfortable in it? Remember, you want to create a space where you feel able to work in. That way, both you and your client can get the maximum benefit from the sessions. One suggestion is recreating similarities from your normal counselling space, even if it's something as simple as having your files and folders nearby. Maybe even change an outfit before starting counselling, that way you can metaphorically change into your counselling mindset and change out of it again after the session. So now you have your counselling space set up, hopefully you're feeling a little more comfortable to start your sessions. Now it's important to think about the different aspects that are going to affect your client. So due to the current circumstances, face-to-face -face therapy is not currently possible, meaning you'll often be contacting your client in their home. Therefore, it's important to consider asking the client where they are at the start of the session and whether they are in a place where they feel comfortable to talk openly. This may not always be possible due to other circumstances and therefore we should be willing to have a conversation with our client about how this may affect the relationship and or the session structure. Depending on how you are contacting the client, it may also be useful to consider sending a text before the session. This could be to ensure that the client feels comfortable to receive the phone call or to make sure that they are in a safe location. Again, this may not always be possible and you should definitely talk about this with your client in order to establish the boundaries around contact. This could always be a good time to talk about whether you are comfortable with the client contacting you if you were to be late for a session or are having connection issues. As well as confidentiality boundaries, it is important to establish new boundaries around the telephone medium, even if you've been working with a client previously. A danger of telephone therapy is its ability to naturally start to feel like having a chat with a friend rather than a counselling session with a client. Therefore, some boundaries may have to be stricter in order to maintain the professional relationship and we should be aware when that boundary is being overstepped. If converting from face-to-face -face therapy, consider maintaining your past routines with the client, such as time and date. This can help to reinforce the professional nature and also means you are utilising already present appointment patterns. Remember to be congruent in this time, being open and honest with your client. It is a new venture for all parties involved, and being able to talk about that openly can be beneficial to your therapeutic relationship. But remember not to undersell yourself. While this may be a scary time, if you speak negatively about your telephone therapy skills, they may feel like they're starting to get a second-rate service. As with all forms of counselling, a big part of our work is being prepared for the unexpected. One unfortunate nuance of telephone counselling is the possibility of disconnection. This can occur through many factors, and therefore it is important to discuss a plan with your client for if it does. This could include talking about who would initiate the call, how long should the initiator wait before calling, and reversely, how long to wait for the call to come through. It may also be that the client is interrupted on their side mid-call and has to immediately hang up. If this was the case, then it is important to establish whether the therapist should immediately call back or wait for a confirmation text from the client. Also, how would this be differentiated from a lost connection? Sessions over the phone may also feel a lot faster than in person. Therefore, it's important to be conscious of the pace of the session and being confident to slow it down when needed. As we are unable to see our clients unless partaking in video calls, using silent attention indicators will be in vain as our clients will not be able to see them. So instead, think about replacing these cues with other attentive affirmations. Also be worrying of utilising silence over the phone. Whilst it can be an important technique, it may lead to client confusion about a possible disconnect. Following on from this, it is important to be able to focus on other ways of communication. Thinking about your tone when communicating with the client, remember that they are unable to see any visual clues such as facial expressions or body language. This could mean altering the volume of your voice to betray certain emotions or even to show empathy or refraining from phrases or terms that may need visual aids alongside them for context. Also remember your client's communication style is important too, and think about how this may change or be more of a challenge over the phone. Things like sarcasm may be hard to detect from a client when you can't see them in front of you. This may be a good time to have a conversation with them in order to discuss and express communication indicators and also to help the client feel at ease to ask for clarifications of misunderstandings throughout the sessions.
Remember, it's important to remind your client that they still have your full undivided attention and that although under different circumstances, you are still offering the best service that you can. And always remember the basics. Although you are not physically present to your client, you can still be both mentally and emotionally present and maintaining that therapeutic relationship will be integral for whatever medium you are communicating through. Whilst working with clients over the phone, it is important to be aware of the disinhibition effect. This is unique to the online and telephone platform of counselling and occurs when clients may feel more anonymous than in person. This means they may feel more comfortable in sharing their emotions and experience and will do so more freely. This can lead to oversharing as they start to divulge too much too quickly and can leave them feeling guilty or ashamed afterwards. It can also cause both client and counsellor to feel overwhelmed in the session as information may have been shared that was not comfortable for the current relationship they are developing. Therefore, it is important for the counsellor to be congruent about this to the client. Being able to acknowledge disinhibition within session can be useful for both parties and allows reflection to make sure that the client is comfortable. More subtle techniques involve summarising to a client in order to give them time to reflect on what they have said and process information and thoughts that may occur. This allows them to become more aware of what they are sharing and then allows them the autonomy of how much more they would like to divulge. But do remember that disinhibition can go both ways and counsellors may overstep boundaries in regard to self-disclosures or may find more of a struggle in experiencing empathy for our clients through disconnect. If you ever feel like these may be an issue, remember to utilise supervision in moments like this and take time to reflect and acknowledge what is going on for you. Whilst there are many new things to remember when transitioning to telephone counselling, it is also good to remember that you're already well equipped to tackle this head on. Throughout your professional career, you will have engaged with training and adapted yourself both professionally and personally to the challenges that you have faced. Although this does not mean that your fears are not valid, this can be a scary time for a lot of us and starting a new venture like this can definitely add to that. Many may feel nervous about the transition to telephone counselling and that's okay. This is akin to when you first started your professional journey with clients in face-to-face -face therapy and it's important to remember just how nervous you would have felt back then and how much that has changed to where you are now. Remember to think about how you adapted to new challenges with clients and how it has led you to develop to the professional that you are today and maybe how you can utilise some of those skills in this new format. And if the thought is too overwhelming, always remember to go back to the basics. Being able to facilitate your client is the most important thing you can do, especially in times like this. The relationship you create throughout your counselling sessions will be key in helping anyone, whether it's over the phone or face to face. And remember, just because it's different, it does not mean it's bad. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to our short presentation on telephone counselling. As this was only a short tour of the nuances of telephone therapy, here are some additional resources for you to read through, alongside some video resources covering some of the basics that can be used for your practice. Thank you very much for listening.